What is going on, my brothers? How you guys doing? Yo! Hey, we guys. Are, we're here live right now. <laughs> Today, as we always do on Thursday, it, we're grateful for everybody that's here watching live that's already ready to rock. Guys, this is the time where we call sellers live. This is the real estate ring. And, uh, you know, what we've been doing, we've been trying this out. We kind of like it. We answer a question that's been searched online to answer for you guys, and then we make them calls. So that's what we're going to do. The question for today is how hard is wholesaling real estate? But before we get into that, which we're definitely going to answer, let me introduce myself and the guys. We're going to introduce ourselves. Ourselves, and we'll get into exactly what you want to know in live calls. So my name is Nathan Payne. I've been in the industry for about seven years, wholesaled hundreds of deals, billions of dollars in transactions. And uh, my goal is to give you guys as much information so you don't go waste your time on those phones and say this business doesn't work because it definitely does. So that's who I am. Nathan Valley, who are you? What is going on, guys? My name is Nathan Valley. Been wholesaling for about five years, known for locking up over 100 contracts in a single year. Some of you might have seen a 30 day challenge I did a little while ago. It's where I picked a totally brand new market, no contacts, no resources, nothing, and did a $20,000 deal in 30 days without spending any money on marketing and only spent like two to three hours a day, Monday through Friday. It was pretty cool. That's a little bit about me. Lane, how about you, brother? Lane Peterson, what is happening, guys? I've been in this industry for a long time. 15 years, bought and sold thousands of houses, fixed and flipped thousands, wholesaled a lot of houses. And wholesaling, you're going to answer how hard it is. It's as simple as one, two, three, find a distressed seller, right back with that seller, sell your contract. One, two, three, closed. That's it. That's it. Love it. Now, now Lane, you've done thousands. I'm not there yet. I haven't done thousands. So to you, it's it, you're saying, hey, it's not that well, the concept is easy, right? But I think right. what's going on for a lot of people. Oh, I, is, I wasn't saying it was it was it was easy. You, I mean, the concept e is easy. Right, right, right. But look, if you guys have haven't gotten started with wholesaling yet, and you're you're just kind of trying to figure out how it goes, the concept again is easy. Lane just said it one, two, three. You want to say it again, Lane? What what is it again to wholesale? One, a deal? find a distressed seller. Two, write a contract with that seller. Three, sell your contract. Now that's simple, right? Now the thing that I think people find difficult about wholesaling is the action part, right? The concept is easy, but they got to find the distressed seller and they got to be able to negotiate and talk with the distressed seller. And that's where I feel like people stop or they just say, you know, this, this is tough. I've called like 10 people. They all said, get lost. I'm, I'm tired. This is, I, this doesn't work. So what we got going on today is we're going to show you guys if it's hard or not. Okay. We got some leads to call. We're going to call some leads live and that's what we do on the real estate ring. So let's get after it. I think doing it live will show people if it's hard or not. And we can explain the process we're taking it through, but I, that's what I got to say. Let's Let's just let's just do the the work and let's see what let the people decide if they think it's hard. What do you guys think? Yeah, I um I know you know if you guys are wondering, man, is it hard or maybe you've been trying you know to wholesale for a little bit and you've been struggling or running into roadblocks and you know sometimes you might feel a little bit discouraged, especially in the beginning when you're like, man, like all these people they say, oh, you know, you just buy low and sell high and it's oh it's and again, guys, you know, I think Lane said it perfectly. The concept is simple. But at the same time, guys, it can be challenging. You know, there's definitely the obstacles that we have to overcome. And it's because, you know, wholesaling does require a certain level of skill set. But that's why you can make a lot of money wholesaling. You know, if if it was easy, if it wasn't, you know, if it didn't have any challenges, if it didn't have any skills, you know, required, probably wouldn't really have much of an opportunity with it. So, you know, with the obstacles, with the challenges, that's really, that's the gift. That's the opportunity of it. That's it. So concept, easy, doing the work, depends how brand new you are. It can be difficult. I would just say for me, at my, my part of the journey, the difficult part is the consistency, <laughs> the drive to continue to do the small and simple things. That's for me where I'm at. The, the paperwork, the negotiation, none of that at that point, like it's not hard. It's just getting to do the activity. Would you say that's true for you, Lane? You've been here for 15 years. You know what to do. What's the hard hardest part about it for you the hardest part in you know, over the years that i've been doing it is just staying consistent you know as long as you you keep the consistency you keep your, your a, a good <clears throat> pulse on what's going on because you're constantly have to adapt right things change all the time a year ago cold calling text messaging was like the thing to do right now it's like obsolete now it's like it doesn't work anymore so you have to really figure out how do i how do i pivot how do i adapt what do i do different to keep the lead flow going that is the lifeline of this business is leads and so right. you always have to figure out 
how to keep those leads coming in and stay consistent at it. Right. And Lane, you know, it's really interesting. So cold calling, text not hitting very much. But you know what happens when people shift off of doing that lead gen to get leads? Sometimes it opens up uh, like an another That's avenue true. for yeah. it. To, so it's like mail wasn't hitting for a long time. But what happens is it goes like through waves. Then people stop and then they mail and they're like, oh, it's working. So it's, it's an interesting industry. And I'm sure it's like that across all industries. <laughs> right. I'm telling you guys, totally smoke. Agree. Smoke signals are gonna, they're, they're coming back, baby. Smoke signals and knocking doors is actually, I've heard, you know, I, I do, I like to knock doors in. I know it works a lot on pre foreclosures and other tight niche lists. So, anyway, all right, guys. So, again, how hard is wholesaling real estate? Let's show you. And by the way, guys, we try to break down these calls into like sales training style. So, we're going to break down the calls, explain to you what Lane's doing, what he's doing good, what he could work on. Same Nathan when he calls or I call, we always break it down. Lane usually takes the calls because he's just a beast and uh, <laughs> we, lo we love to just uh, watch him. But um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So stay tuned to see how hard it is. And you might learn something great to how to improve your sales skills from watching, uh, watching us do it. You guys got anything you want to say before we, uh, Lane starts dialing? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind being the punching bag. You guys just, you know, critique me, beat me up. <laughs> See, see what happens. No, bro, Man, you're great. Don't, don't you think after like 15 years that don't, don't you think you earned like some seniority or something? You know, should be beating <laughs> up think, on like the younger guys. So. I would think <laughs> so, but it doesn't you seem to be happen. Beat, you should be beating us up, dude. <laughs> all hey, right, Bob. I'm gonna call Vicky. Vicky, uh, these are all inbound leads again. You know, we talk about that each week, right? There's a difference between inbound and outbound leads. These people are coming to me, telling me that they want to sell their home. There's some some sort of reason why they're filling out a web form or a Facebook ad and sending me their information. It's inbound, right? It's, it, it's not outbound. Outbound is cold calling, text messaging, where I'm reaching out trying to find a distressed seller. So these are all inbound. Yeah, look, and while look, he's- a Quality lead, but much more expensive. Right, and as Lane dials that in there, I wanted to say inbound is not where I think new newbies or new people the industry, industry should start because it's expensive. And if you don't right. nail, or yeah, if you don't close a couple of those, you could be in a hole. That's why a lot of people like to go do the activities that don't cost that much, like driving for dollars, calling themselves, texting, knocking doors, flyers, mailers, like to niche lists, right? But you do it to a giant big list, be careful. Anyway, let's go, Lane. Let's get it. You're going to see how saucy this is. Are we going to get a hold of them or not? Hello, Hello Vicky. Yes. Vicky, hi. My name is Lane. I am calling about the property you sent over to us that you're looking to sell on San Robar. Yes. How, which company are you with? I am with 123 Close. You filled out some information on one of our sites online. I did. I'm, I'm just making sure because you're not the only one that I, I just want to make sure I get the person with the right company. Totally understand. Good to hear. I don't blame you. I would be reaching out to multiple companies too. You always, you always, you always want multiple offers. Right. Well, Vicki, as I'm getting your property pulled up, a good time? Yes. Okay. As I'm getting your property pulled up, here. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on there. Um, it's a four bedroom, three bath, uh, has a garage. We have a, there's a carport and I have some storage sheds in the back that I probably have to sell. I don't think that that's part of what y'all do. I, did, I don't know. It's only, I've only been doing this for maybe the last 45 minutes. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I have appointments for people, but I guess because it's so late in the afternoon, I saw you, you're actually calling from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So we're, I'm actually calling you from a different state in Arizona, but that's where we make all of our calls from. So it's a little bit earlier here, but you know, we have boots on the ground there in that area of where you're at. Well, yeah, because they're just making appointments because I guess everybody's gone. But anyways, um, the house is um, in foreclosure. So um, I just, I just can't, I was raised in this house with my parents and they both have passed and my brother passed, my mother and my brother passed in the same year. And um, I just, I've got to get out from underneath it. I, I just. Okay. So, I, I don't even want so when you say it's in foreclosure, is there a date? Is there an auction date already set? Yes. The 28th of August. Okay. So right around the corner. Three weeks. Have you had any communication with the trustee or with the bank to see if they would entertain a postponement if you got an offer? No, I didn't know that that's something I could do. Yeah, they actually, you can you can reach out to them, get a hold of, it's it's mostly the trustee who you need to talk with. That's who's been sending you the paperwork and just 
talk with them and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm expecting an offer to come in. Can I get a postponement, you know, an extra third? And usually they're pretty good about at least giving you another 30 days. And I can help you through that process. We deal with it all the time. Okay. So it's just the trustee that I need to contact and try to get postponement for 30 days. Yeah. It and they means- might, they might want to see an actual offer in hand that would help a lot um, to be able to do that. Okay. I'm trying to pull up this address and I'm I'm having some difficulty. Vicky, can you help me out? Is the address 688 San Robar Drive in Orange? No, I sent back. I guess it was there was a Stu that texted me and then I got you. But anyways, it's um it's 6 and uh it's the Google image is actually from a dirt road and there's property between the fence line and the dirt road that's overgrown. And that is what the picture is of. That's the back. That's not even the house. I mean, it's you can actually see more. Like you can kind of see the um, the chimney on my neighbor's house, and then a little bit of my roof. Gotcha. But okay. Not really. I don't. I don't know why the picture is like that. We are at the very end of the road and on a on a circle. So I think there was an issue. Well, we won't we won't go off of that Google picture and hold you to it. That's for sure. Okay, tell, tell, not, not okay I found it now. So it's a three bedroom, three bath, about eighteen hundred and sixty two square feet. Um, no, it's a four bedroom, three bath, one gar- car garage, and um, I don't know what the, the I don't know square feet, but I believe it's over two hundred two thousand square foot. It's pretty. It's a big house. Okay. And there's a lot of land. I mean, it's it's not, this isn't, you know. What is your lot size? Really nothing. Huh? What is your lot size, do you know? I have no idea. Okay. Like I said, just been doing this for 45 minutes. I've been putting it off. I've just been, I, well, very difficult. Yeah, no, I understand, Vicky. I'm, I'm here to help. I promise you that. We deal with this all the time and we can help. I've been buying real estate for the last 15 years. I've dealt a lot with foreclosures. I understand the process. I understand how to communicate with the trustee uh, and the bank. So I'm here to help. So we, you are under a time crunch. That's for sure. There's, you know, you can't get around that. So we would need to move quickly. Like in your best case scenario, what are you hoping for? Are you talking about the money I want for it? Best case? Money, time? timing. Do you have a place to go? Do you need to stay there after we buy it to find another place? Just the whole, yeah, in, in your mind, best case scenario, what does that look like? I don't even know. I just know I need to sell the house. I don't have a clue. My whole family has died and they died out of this house. So that's why I'm probably where I am because there's just nobody and I've just completely shut down. But um, I've gotten offers. I mean, I've gotten, you know, the check, a ton, a ton, a ton of the, you know, we buy your house that I have thrown away. For yeah. The- I don't even know. Well, yeah, I, I understand. Um, foreclosure notices are public information. And so people find that and they start reaching out like crazy to, to try and buy your home. So I, I, that's understandable. Right. I know that the house is, it's worth 300000 350 I mean, it is, I don't know, damage to the house. No. Um, T- tell me about the damage. It, it, there's a, a window came missing in the front bedroom and that's all I could really think of. There's no other damage to the house. Oh, you said there's no damage. Oh, okay. I, I misunderstood so, you. There's one window pane missing and that's because of knuckleheads. But, you know, it it's not our need for a paint job, but, you know, I mean, it could definitely do. We upgraded the kitchen, the master bedroom, you know. How long master, ago? Uh, the kitchen... Oh, it's your four months father died, so it's probably been within seven years. And it okay. <laughs> like it just happened, but um, yeah, within seven years. So it's it's got the um, you know nicer cabinet. We put new top in the kitchen, and it's got the the one king countertop. The carpet I've been taking out slowly. It's been here for forty years. There's really there's nothing else that's wrong with that. How's the roof? Do you know? Oh, the roof is within the six my father passed, so it's I would say it's probably only about six years old. Okay. You said that you upgraded the kitchen and the master. Did you were you saying the master bathroom was updated when you updated the, the kitchen? Bathroom, yeah. The 
bathroom. Um, oh, it was just we put a new um, towel down and our, or no, it was not towel. It was took the towel, plastic towel, whatever you call that. Took that up and um, put that, put in a new um, vanity. Gotcha. And um, I changed, I've changed all the commodes in the house within the last 10 years. I well, it sounds like it sounds like you've done a wonderful job upkeeping this house, Vicky. Honestly, tell me about the loan that's in place. What what kind of a loan is it, and how much is owed, like to bring it current? I don't, I don't even know. I am. Um, I don't. I don't know. Um, whose whose name is the loan in? It's in my parents because they both had their name on the on the mortgage. And when my mother, my my father died, and my mother died, and I could not, I could not reach out to anybody because she had it through her phone, and I couldn't get into her phone and to even pay the mortgage. And I tried talking. I went to the bank. I went, you know, who I thought it was through. I don't know. It was just a whole big thing. And then I had. Um, major surgery and was down and then the depression hit me and then I've been out just been sticking my head in the sand <laughs> gotcha okay well uh, so do you I don't know I do know that I got the final judgment is here and I do have this company but just give me a second but it's like $30,000 for the mortgage. And then the 127, 100,000 for the, um, that's for the foreclosure. So it's got a, it's, let me just repeat that. It has a $127,000 balance and it's, there's about $30,000 in back payments and fees and penalties and stuff. No, I think that that is the actual back payments for the property. It's all right here. Attorney's fees, escrow. Uh, I don't know how they did property inspections. Nobody came in. Yeah, they're property. just charging you for that because they sent somebody by probably to take pictures from the, on the outside. What's the total that it says there? Uh, $127,318.40. Okay, so that's the total amount that they would need to pay every your pay your mortgage off, pay all the back payments and interest and fees and all that. That's what it sounds like Correct. to me. That's, yeah, this is the final judgment. Okay, and does it have the? Well, I guess there's a there's a bunch of line items. I was saying, is is there an amount that would reinstate the loan? You're saying, does it look like it's around thirty thousand? That is from the company. Are you talking about the principal or the? No, just what's the total of all the all the back it's stuff that they're charging you for? Here. The back payment for it is like thirty thousand because that's or maybe it was hard and that they send it and it's to my parents and I don't open it and um, I have opened them but they're in I can go get it it's in the other room it's just for the property and I think that's who took over the mortgage the mortgage was through a Bank of America. But gotcha. then I guess somebody over the mirror, over, over the mortgage. Yeah, I don't really know. It's the first time I've even talked about it without completely losing it. Yeah. Well, you're doing great. You're you're doing great. Yeah. Bank of America probably just uh, sold it to somebody else. Now, tell me, your your mom passed away how long ago? Um, November two thousand and twenty-two. Okay. And did you have to go through probate in order to? change title into your name and that you're authorized to sign and sell it and all that? I went through legal aid and during that time I lost a phone, the internet, power, water. I had nothing and I had no idea what was going on and they sent me a, a letter and the final judgment that yes, it was it was done through probate and um, the name has been changed from Jim and Betsy Schultz to Vicki Scrape. Okay. So as far as you know, you do have authorization to sell the home. Yeah, I have. Le I have a case number from. Yes. Perfect. Okay, let me see here real quick and just verify. Okay, so I show that the home is in the estate of Nell E. Schultz. Yes. And you're probably the director of the estate or the controller of the estate. There's no paperwork for that, but yes, I am. I mean. Okay. The house is left. Okay. So I think what would be best here, let me see what the best number that I could come up with. And 
be able to pay cash and be able to let you stay in it for a little while afterwards so you're able to comfortably find another place. I know that I can get that proved like without even talking to my office uh, for 30 days. So say, you know, if I can come in here and get this closed before the foreclosure date, I could give you another 30 days to remain in the home to be able to find something else. Is that doable? Is that something you think is fair? Yes, yeah, it's very doable. That's, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Because I figure I would have to have, you know, I would have to use a big chunk of whatever I got. Hey, movers to come in. Yeah. And move it all as fast as they could. I mean, there's been 15 people that lived in this house. It's just, it's just, I'm just buried in it. And that's understandable. You've been there a long time. Um, so let me ask you this. Total that is owed is 127300 How much are you needing or hoping to get on top of that? I'm getting, I, I want as close to three hundred as possible. Okay. I mean, the houses are going for 400 around. And there is a ton of, and there, they, the, the house that went around the corner from us, and it was right at, right under 400, doesn't have half of the yard that we have. How long ago was that? Do you know? I think it was, I talked with my other neighbor, it was around last December, I think this one it was sold. Okay. Or maybe, I don't know, that's when I talked to the neighbor about what they sold it for, and, and the last time I did anything. Okay. Last well, I'm on. I'm looking right now. I'm, I'm looking at all the stuff that is sold in the last six months, and I'm only going back six months because that's all an appraiser is going to do. Anything past right. six months is no longer, you know, a, a comparable anymore because that's just too long. And I, I don't see anything that is sold over 400. It's all like what you said in the beginning, you know, in, in the well, mid, like, mid threes. Yeah, it was sold right under 400. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the highest one I see is is 385, and it was almost 3,000 square feet, so quite a bit bigger. So I, I think your initial okay. your initial number was accurate in the mid threes of, of you know what this thing is worth. Right. It's all fully updated and and turnkey. Um, right. You know, and somebody comes in here yeah, and does the updating. Yeah, that's with new paint on it. I understand that. I yeah. do. I do. So, and, and again, we're gonna have to move quickly, right? I mean, time is not your friend right now. Yeah. Because um, if we do uh, not, if we do not get a postponement from your trustee, like that is a very, very fast close. Typically, our our fast closes are like thirty days, and okay. and, th and those are pretty quick. You know, that's one of the reasons why I um, even contacted y'all because it said that you could do it within seven days on the internet. But that's here nor there. I understand you can only do what you can do. But I have, you know, this is this is not something that I want, but. It's something that I have to do where I'm just going to be, I mean, they're going to put me to the curb with nothing. Yeah. Well, we're here to make sure that does not happen, Vicki. So let me just kind of tell you without seeing it, kind of where I would be. And if the title company can get done within, you know, 14 days, seven days, we can close it that quick. A lot of the delay that happens is with the title work. You know, we have to open escrow with the title company. They run to make sure I can get title insurance, make sure that loan is paid off. It just takes a little bit of time, uh, which is a lot of it is out of our control, right? Sure. Sorry, I'm just kind of crunching some numbers here to kind of tell you where we would be with this, with all this information in mind and the, and the, the condition that it's in. Uh, we could probably be right around 230,000, 230 to 235. And that is a quick close. We're going to pay all the costs. So that's a net number to you. So after your mortgage is paid off, which if that's all correct, if it's 127,300, you will walk with about $104,000. I see. Okay. So, all right. Sound good? Yeah. Is that something you want to do, Vicki? Well, I have all these other people that are coming. I have Monday appointment, and um, I guess I need to talk to the trustee. I have to do that. Start trying to get a hold of them first thing in the morning. Tomorrow's. Yeah, I would. I, I would recommend doing that. Get a hold of them as fast as you can. Right. And as far as as far as meeting with all your other people, you do what you need to do. I'm just telling you, my, my offer is good today. I know that I can get that approved. We're buying houses every single day. So come Monday, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to know if my offer is still good. You know, I, I might've bought three other houses and spent a lot of our money. And now our money for the month is kind of running up. And I know that with our budget and everything, I can get that approved today. 
you know, and maybe obviously you don't have to sign it today, but if we could get it signed before the weekend, I know that I could press forward and get involved and help stop the foreclosure with your trustee. Okay. Well, um, like I said, this is the very first time that I've talked to somebody, so I can't really, I really can't commit. I have to, I have to do a due diligence and at least talk to, to other people. Totally and understandable. And if, you know, if you can't do it on Monday, you can't do it on Monday. You know, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Well, I would recommend just, this is just a simple recommendation. Tomorrow's Friday, right? And you have the whole weekend. Whoever you have an appointment with on Monday, I'd give them a call and just say, hey, I'm up against the clock here. Can you get out here any sooner? Can you kind of give me numbers over the phone? You know, try and filter I out can. as many of these people as you can so that so that right. we can meet this timetable is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? I just can't because I, I'm pressed for time. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. I don't need to wait. I need to have an offer. I, I need to make my decision by Monday at the latest. Yeah, I would, I would really try and... I, w I would hope you can have a decision by tomorrow end of day so we could open escrow on Monday morning and start that process right away. Whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, Vicki, honestly, I'm just, I'm, right, I'm just right. shooting you straight. I know how, you know, things can get delayed when you open escrow and the title company takes a little bit longer to get the payoff from your lender and that delays things. I just, I see and it all the time. You're talking complete foreign. Language. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anything about, I mean, I know these words that you're saying and I know enough to get in big trouble <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry saying. about that yeah I, mean, I, I, I just i've never done anything like this and i'm scared you know i, I don't I, know what i'm doing so you know i just need to um educate myself and um i definitely i i thank you very much for telling me about the trustee i will try to contact them well i'll start trying to contact them now Awesome. Well, Vicki, I'm here to help. I'm, I'm completely here to help. We do this all the time. We save people from actually going to the foreclosure. And because at the end of the day, if it does sell at the trustee sale and it's bought by a third party, like by an investor, they're going to come knocking and they're going to want to get the house vacated and get you on your way. And this way we at, at least we put money, a lot of money in your pocket and we're able to let you stay there for another 30 days. So I, whatever you need, I'm here to help. Um, do you have okay. Lane, right? My name is Lane. Yes. And it's and your last name? Peterson, Lane Peterson. I can't see it. Hold on a second. My eyes is all watered up. <laughs> Okay, Peterson, and do you have a number I need to contact you, or you just contact me back? This number that I called you on is the best number to, to get me at. If you want, okay. I can I can text it to you when we hang up here. No, I got it right here. It's three, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Vicki, is there All anything right. that I can do to help you with your due diligence that you are saying you need to do? I don't know. I don't think so. I've just got to find the trustee. Have to find my glasses. Can't read this. Hey, um, would we hang up here? Do me a favor and take a picture of that statement that you just read off to me. And if you could just text it to me. The statement. What? Yeah, you were you 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 read you read off the numbers from your your last statement. Oh, oh yeah, from the um, the foreclosure notice. Yeah, yeah. If you could take a picture of that and send it to me, I'd like to look at it. It's, it's a judgment. It's um it's a couple of pages long but there you want just the, the nitty-gritty of it the numbers yeah i'd love to look at it okay okay vicky call me text me whatever you whatever you need any questions you have we got we got we got to get moving so let me know how i can help okay thank you lane thank you vicky all right great bye. talking to you poor lady boom Dude, Four, look, that was, a, that was a master class, everybody, as I'm writing down what questions you need to ask to someone that's going through pre foreclosure. That was amazing. Great job. <laughs> and and just to to like kind of bring it back to where we started this this episode at guys is wholesaling hard. This is what you deal with on a daily basis, day in, day out. Like this isn't, yeah, it's, it's not, not like just, hey, here, here's my offer. You want it or not. That's exactly. not how it goes. <laughs> 
Got you. And, and guys, these are people's lives. You know, it's important. If if you guys have been hesitant to take action, what look, I get it. It's because it, you know, it's a big deal, right? These are people's homes, these are people's lives. You know, you do need to know what you're doing, you know, to get into it or at least be working with somebody who does. I mean, it's really, really important. Cause the thing is, in the seller here, Vicky's situation, if she goes with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, right? Just some some person who just oh they 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 want to get their first deal and they just they they give a high number because they want to get a contract or whatever, and she doesn't sell that home in time. Oh, she she's gets screwed. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So Lane, let's screwed. let's and talk about let's talk about the objection that you got hit with that ev- it stumps everybody. And I saw the strategy that you did. And so let's talk about it because I am curious and I think this is something that I'm always trying to improve on. Is that cool if we dive into something? Uh, Heck yeah, let's thing. do it. So let's, let's it. dive in. So she basically said, hey, I can't accept your offer right now, right? And she says, I have other people that are coming on Monday. Now that's a tough one. That's a tough one to overcome when they're already got appointments going on. You said, hey, I don't know if my offer will be good by then. In my opinion, that is not 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 to rock you, Lane, uh, but that's just for me. I've just never found that to work it, unless I mean, you've been doing this for, for forever. So that usually doesn't work. I feel like that creates like they don't feel comfortable and they're like, well, I don't you know, I don't have to make it. She kind of pushed back on it. She's like, well, if it doesn't have my then it doesn't have my then. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that a strategy you like to use and does it work a lot or do you, what are your so opinion? this one? I knew I wasn't going to get a contract today. It was more to put urgency on her to get those other people out there. Okay. Like, let's not wait till Monday, right? Monday is another two business days closer. Well, it's actually calendar days, you know, one, two, three, four calendar days closer to this trustee sale that is right around the corner. And so get those people out there, get other offers, get them out there, try and get them out there like this weekend, tell them what you're up against. But then also, and it's true, like, I might buy three more houses tomorrow and my money, my budget for the month is kind of out. I don't know if my offer will be the exact same. I have had success with that. Okay. Um, but I was hoping on this one that I wasn't saying, oh, you got to sign it today. Yeah. So so I, I agree with everything you said other than the budget part, because like, bro, you you built, you can buy a thousand houses if it makes sense. So what I would say, the only thing I'd say is like, hey, look, I know you got people coming on Monday. Don't say, hey, my offer is not good until then. Maybe not like kind of putting that pressure on. I would just say, hey, look, I totally get where you're coming from that you want to wait. I would feel the same way as you would, but you got till Monday and this we're against the clock here. So is there any way you can get those people here closer or faster tomorrow? Because I don't want this to you to lose this. Right. So instead of that's what I think, I don't, that's my opinion. I'm not, again, not here to rock you, but instead of saying, yeah, no. And I think we also did that as well. You did, you did, you did. I'm I'm just saying when you take out the portion of it's like, I don't know if my offer will be good by then. I don't, I just, I'm just telling you, I just didn't think that was necessary. And I think it's good to just be like, Hey, I get it. I'd want to get as many people through here as possible. But, can you get them here faster? That's just me. I don't know, Nate, if you have an opinion. I probably would have done yeah. the same thing as you, Lane, but that's a tough, that's a really tough one when there's a <laughs> lot of investors coming through. You want to put the pressure, but at the same time, you're like, I don't know if I want to put the... Anyway, it's a tough ju- thing to juggle. So great, great job, Lane. What? Just giving you my opinion. No, one love big, it. Love it. One big thing to take away, guys, is there's there's three of us on this call here and you'll get three different answers and oh, all of three of us close deals, right? So just keep that in mind. There, there's there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? And a, a lot kind of comes down to personal preference. What I've found works well for me, which is kind of funny. It's like a hybrid of what both of you are talking about. So for me in the conversation, and guys, it's very easy to like Sunday night quarterback it and yeah. talk like, oh, here's all the exact things we can do. Guys, we make mistakes all the time when you're live in the game on the call, right? Guys, yeah. I don't care who you're, you're going to slip up. You're going to forget to ask a question. You're going to do something. I do it all the time. Right. So in a perfect world, when I, you know, everything's going perfectly, what I like to do is um, I always like to ask when, when are you looking to make a decision by, you know, well, well, I have someone coming out Monday. Okay. Got it. So it sounds like no matter what, like you don't, you're not going to make a de- decision no matter what until after then. Right. Perfect. And she might say, yes, she might say no. Right. And then I might ask another question to find out, well, Hey, what would make you say yes? You know, before that or anything. A lot of times people say nothing. Like there's nothing that would make me sign sooner because I just need somebody else, like a second opinion so that I can have something to compare it to, which is fine. 
with giving my offer, I personally like to ask questions until they tell me what kind of the perfect offer is for them, which you did a really, uh, really good job, right? With the 30 days staying after whatnot. And guys, that's how you can compete with other people, right? You create a custom offer for that specific seller. Because that other guy, that, that other wholesaler she meets on Monday, he might have a higher price, but he might have not asked the other questions. He might have not, you know, he might not have the 30 days, the other areas to where we can add value to the seller. And Lane might win the deal and be at a lower price because he made the perfect offer for the seller. And Lane but showed his expertise like too. She, trust is huge. So if she meets some wholesalers like, well, I can do 350, she might be like, I don't know if I trust this guy. So that's so a big part of it. Back to um to what I like to do, the hybrid. So the hybrid of what, what I do with sellers is right as, hey, when are you looking to make a decision by? If they're like, oh, you know, well, for the right offer, I'm ready to make a decision today or whatever. I say, okay, got it. And then go through the conversation. We get, get towards the end. I still haven't given an offer yet. And I'll say, hey, so, so we talked about a bunch of stuff, blah, 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 blah. I know you want this much for the house. Now you said you're definitely like 100% ready to give a definite yes or no on an offer today, right? And they're like, yeah. And I say, okay, got it. I just, I just want to make sure because when we do make an offer, it's only able to be good for 24 hours. And the reason we do that, and this is kind of what goes in with what Lane was saying. And the reason we do that is because we're not like these big hedge funds. You know, we don't have unlimited resources. Um, we're a small kind of private family run company. So when we make an offer, you know, we're setting those resources aside and making a commitment to you. And so when we're saying making an offer and saying yes to you, we're saying no to other people. So if you're not ready to make a yes or no decision today, that's totally okay. But I just want to make sure, you know, if you're not ready, that's fine. We'll put it on hold and you let me know, you know, when you would like to revisit this. And a lot of times that's where last second I've found I've been able to weed out that, oh, well, okay, I do need to talk it over with my wife or whoever or blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, well, yeah, I actually can't, you know, until Monday because someone else is coming to see a house. And then what I personally like to do, I like to hold my offer. I like to wait. I like to be one of the last people. If I know I built good enough rapport in that conversation, which you did really well, Lane, they're going to want to at least hear what, what you said. In my experience, you know, people want to review the offers. And for me, I like to be the last one because when I'm the last one, you know, again, you can just ask more questions and then you get to see what are all the cards on the table. What's everyone else's offer? Right. That's, oh, why hey, we like, that's why we like painless flipping lane. I don't know how much you know about that, but basically we just position ourselves in this point. It's like if we know they're going to run it by a couple people, no matter what, we just say, hey, look, you know. I'm not always able to pay the most. That's just how it is. But I do know a couple of people that are buying in your area that I can run through. If you're just going to wait till Monday, I have a couple of people I can run through your property to see where they would be at. And if I can get you, if we can get you the best offer, then obviously let's do that. And then we just, we wholesale it. And then we just get people through and we, uh, we don't even ask for a contract or anything because we, the people that we send through, we like preface, we get, make sure they understand what's going on. And we usually just go in at the end and beat everybody's offers. So that's, uh, and the other thing like is you, do. you can even play, um, you know, kind of exactly what you're doing. We're like, Hey, you know, uh, Vicky, you know, Ms. Seller you know, we're, we're here to help you, you know, no matter what, and whether it's with us or with somebody else. And so I like to kind of play that same card to where it's like, Hey, look, why don't you meet with the person on Monday? What time let's schedule a time. You know, what, when should I call you Monday afternoon, two o'clock or, or four o'clock, right? I'd pick a time and say, I'll tell you what, meet with them, see what, what they're able to do. And then I'll give you a call and we can chat a little bit more, see what we're able to do. And look, if they're, I mean, if it's really good, Hey, that's amazing. You know, 100% I'm going to encourage you and tell you to go forward with them. You know, and you can even ask me questions if you have any questions about their offer, the paperwork or stuff, you know, I have no problem letting you know, you know, that it's good to move forward with it. And if we're able to do something better, great. But if not, we're here to help you either way. And so yeah, guys, that. again, at the end of the day, who's that seller going to want to work with, right? Like despite who has the higher offer, who's the seller going to want to work with? Yeah. You know? Lane, so, Lane, you crushed it with the rapport, but yeah, it's a fun topic to talk about because this is always something that either it's so hard. We all want to get that like them just be like, forget all the competition. So we just try to figure out the best way to position it. Awesome job. Yeah. And this and, one, this one was pretty unique being that she does have a timetable. Like right. she's got to get moving. She's like, she even admitted I've had my head buried in the sand. I haven't been doing anything. Well, Vicky, it's time to go. Like, yeah, you, you got to. She does need someone to do something or nothing's going to happen. That. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite thing, the best part you did was 
there's two things. The one when you were like, hey, look, call them back. And you weren't competing against like, oh, you know, don't go with them, blah, blah, blah. You're like, hey, we'll call them back, have them come sooner for your benefit, you know, because of this important read, like, hey, it's not about me and accepting my offer. It's like, no, you need to do this for you. Because what that's doing, guys, is, is in that moment, he's one, able to add pressure. It makes things more difficult for the other company. And he's demonstrating that he genuinely cares about her outcome and her situation. And it honestly, guys, it is important for her. You know, I mean, if what today's Thursday and she has appointment on Monday, dude, if you're wholesaling and that's the earliest you can do an appointment, like you're not that good. (laughs) Dude, I always like if they could only meet on a, on, on weekends, I, I will take it every single time because there's a lot of wholesalers that won't. And so you're the one getting that appointment. And in this lane, this is a, this is a deal. Like this is some, this is a great opportunity. So oh, for sure. um, this, is a, this is our optimal client right here. Yeah. This is what you're looking for. So when I tell people, our clients that we work with, like the, our, our students and stuff uh, of our program, this is uh, what pre foreclosure does. A lot of people, unfortunately they pass away. They're not able to make the payments. It stacks up. Like this is uh, who we help. And Lane, Lane can push the the sale date back he can give her an extra 30 days like these are things that she, she's not going to really get if she lists it on the mls you know she, oh, pro- yeah. she that's, could, not, that's not an option that's not an option so great job lane again great job i would call her back tomorrow personally i would call her back tomorrow and just say hey look i just want to check in on you i'm kind of worried about the situation i want to make sure you're 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 handling it and getting to it as fast as possible so you have enough time and then i would just kind of test it would you say you're in a position where you'd say let's go right now or if not totally fine are you waiting till monday if she is then i would call some buyers in the area i'd investor lift that bad boy and just talk to him and be like hey you know guys i have the situation i just want you to go in there and tell me what you pay and we might have to beat out some other investors but um you know i if i can get some solid offers in there then you would already have it pre-sold that that's what yeah. exactly what i would do in that situation love it yeah i just uh i just set an appointment in my crm to call her tomorrow you're gonna get this one bro 100 percent. this is yours I, I think we are too yeah this is you 100 percent. you call she's either in because she's like you're right i thought about it or she's like let me wait and then you just get some serious buyers in there and she's gonna say you know what this lane guy he knows what he's talking about all these other jokes jokers that have come by they they saying they can do this but i just don't feel like they have the experience you're gonna get it putting it out yeah. there hey cool. this was a great call and this was phenomenal feedback you guys both gave because all of that is 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 on point but i mean this is like from a scale of one to 10, this is 10 of 10, the type of lead that you want coming through your system. <laughs> this is great that we've done this live. Unfortunate, this an unfortunate situation, but this is a great showing of like what we do and how we help people. Cause this is, this is it. Like she's yep. upset and she's upset because of the situation she's in, she can't even call the bank to get this thing like slow down or even talk to them about like a, you know, a remodification, re- loan remodification or remod or whatever. She's like, she's, she's up against the, the the wall and and we can help her out yeah so she just sent me a picture of that statement that i asked I her to send loan modification I, did i say remodification i don't even think that's a word <laughs> <laughs> so okay sweet we're gonna all right man well, we're gonna, we're gonna help vicky we're gonna get we're gonna help vicky let's do it boys <laughs> All right, hey, guys. Well, hey, everybody. if you're watching this and you're like, I don't think I could do that. We promise you guys, if you have enough uh, at bats on these situations, you're going to be able to do it. And if you have a situation like this and you still don't, hit up HOV Lane. Hey, hit up Painless Flipping. That's what we're here for, guys. We do these calls because we know there's situations like this all the time that people are running into and they just don't know what to do. So we'll partner with you on the deals. Just hit us up and uh, we'll work you work you through them. All right. Yeah, guys, it's it's and yeah, uh, just to, to add to that, it's OK to get started and not know everything. Guys, it, there's a lot to know in wholesaling. There's so many different things, so many different skills to develop. It's OK to get started and not know anything, know everything. But just make sure you have somebody in your corner that you can go to that does know. You know, whether it's uh, a mentor, a partner, someone you can reach out to JV, whatever the case may be, someone that you can go and get answers and and help from. Um, And the reason is it's not for you. It's not for the men. It's not to sign up for some coaching thing. Guys, it's for the seller. It's for Vicky. It's so that her life, her situation doesn't get screwed up, you know, because someone didn't know what they were doing. So love it. All right, guys. Uh, we'll yeah. on the- that's, that's why I that's why I say, I mean, my name is Lane, but I say, hey, I'm the HOV Lane. You want a wholesale? Let's carpool. Let's go. Let's, let's carpool. do it. Let's, let's help each other. It. Love that, man. Well, let's hey. catch. I don't I don't have anything catchy for my name. It should well, 
<laughs> they say the, he's like the valet service. That's not how you say his last name, <laughs> yeah. Va- Valley, but he's a valet service. He'll take you. you he'll go. take you for a ride. Like you trying right. to sell that house? I'll park it for you. All right, guys. We'll see you valet. next week. Today. Peace out, Thanks. everybody. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's Nathan Payne. And for the first time ever, we just released this insane training bundle that has literally everything that I've learned from doing a combined 4,000 deals in real estate, all from starting with absolutely no previous business background experience or any real estate experience. Plus, there's over $19,000 worth of free gifts that we're throwing in all for an insanely low, low price. If you want to get your hands on this, be sure to click the first link on the description below right now.